And now we're going to talk about a universe that appears to be designed. A number of years ago, I had a case where uh, a husband had killed his wife and his child, his daughter, uh, by asphyxiation. Did I say that right? Why is that a hard word for me? What he did was he basically gassed them to death in their own home. And in the morning that they were discovered, her, his mother-in-law, the victim's mother, came over to visit her daughter. And when she got to the house, she saw that there were some conditions at the house that were suspicious. And looking back at it, as an investigator, when I arrived there, I saw the same thing that she saw. There were several layers of suspicious conditions. When she got to the house, look, there's a backstory here. This guy had been having problems with his wife and had been having financial problems and relational problems. And you could kind of see this murder coming. So there's a story, a backstory involving his relationship with his wife that was unique to him. And when she got there, he had not been paying his bills here. He had not been paying the mortgage. He had not been paying the utility bills. And the gas had been turned off at the house. But he had just recently, like the day before, paid to have the gas turned back on. That's unusual, right? The only utility that he paid to have turned back on was the gas. So that was an unusual backstory. When the mom arrived, she saw that her daughter's car was still in the driveway where it really wasn't supposed to be at the time. Usually she's gone, but or usually it's parked in the garage. And when she walked around the back of the house, she discovered that the back window that was, she, the door was locked. She couldn't get in. And she knocked on the door, nobody answered. So she went around the back of the house, and the back door was often unlocked, but sometimes it was open. She thought she might be in the back, back door. And, and what she saw was that one of the windows that was kind of always frozen in a half-open position, it's a very safe neighborhood usually, no one, who cares? It's, it's always warm, so I'll leave the window open. We're in Southern California. But this window had been forced closed. So the window was closed, and that surprised her, because she's like, that window's always open. So they had some another layer that was actually closer to that. In addition to the backstory of this relationship, there were some conditions of the house that were suspicious to her. When we finally got in, we discovered that inside the house, there were a number of other interesting conditions. There was a door at the bottom of the stairs that was almost always open. It was just a door to the stairwell. It was closed. Upstairs, there was a bedroom door closed. And there was a, a pile of clothing. There was a wall heater that heated the hallway on one side of the wall here and heated the master bedroom on the other side, old house. And somebody had stacked clothes up on the hall side. And the pilot light was out, but the gas was full on. Inside the bedroom, and some of the clothes were actually on the floor. When the door was closed, they were on the floor against the crack at the bottom of the door. <laughs> And now the, the gas had filled the room, and both of them didn't even realize they had been, been uh, they suffocated in, in, in the extent of that natural gas, and didn't even realize they were dying, and they were both dead when we got there. It seemed to us that there were several layers of evidence that we had to consider here, that to me, it looked like somebody had set this up. Right? I mean, you just start the gas the day before. You have a reason to kill her. All the things are usually in the open position or in the closed position, and you've got clothes stacked against one side of the wall heater and even stacked against the crack at the bottom of the door to, so you couldn't even allow a gas to escape from the room. That, to me, that seemed like just too obvious, right? It's clear that somebody has tampered with this environment to cause that death. Does that make sense? So if you saw that as an investigator, you're going to go, okay, we've got to work this case. This is not an accident. This looks like it's been tampered with. Something similar has actually occurred in the universe. Because at both the foundational level, at the regional level, and at the locational level of our, our planet, things appear to be, have been tampered with. Set up perfectly. Not so that a death would occur, but so that life would occur. And at the foundational level of the universe, there are several factors called cosmological constants that have to be just so in order for life to emerge. As a matter of fact, if they're not just so, you, you can't even get the universe to be stable. 
And these conditions are on a razor's edge of fine-tuning. Let me give you an example of some of them in the universe. For example, did you realize that the, both the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force at the atomic level have to be extremely fine-tuned in order for matter to be stable? Even electromagnetism has to be incredibly fine-tuned. Even the forces of gravity, if they're in one direction of the tuning or the other direction of the tuning, either things will not coalesce or things will completely collapse. It turns out even the elements in the universe like carbon and helium have to be set to a certain level or life does not emerge. And it turns out this fine tuning is incredible and razor thin, razor sharpness. Just a fraction of it in one direction or a fraction in the other direction Life does not, the universe doesn't even hold together. Why is it this way? It's not just at that, at that foundational level. This is also true as you come in closer to the level of galaxies. At the regional level, you see that there's also fine-tuning. Our galaxy is incredibly fine-tuned. It's just the right shape. For life to emerge, it's far more likely to emerge in spiral galaxies. I'll show you why in a second. But it's not just that. It's that it's just in the right position in the universe, and it's just the right size. And our position inside this galaxy is also just right, not too close to the center where it's disruptive, but on a spiral arm outside where the mass is distributed enough that we could actually emerge as a planet, the right composition. Chemically, even the right planets are in our solar system. You realize that for a long time it's been debated but Jupiter and the large gas giants have a great role to play because they catch gravitational junk that's coming out into our, our system and they can divert it away from the inner planets. So a solar system that has large gas giants that are heavy gravity giants, those kinds of uh, bodies will help the inner planet survive asteroids, survive all kinds of space junk. Make sense? So all of this is just right. And if you get down to the level of our planet, well, then there's a number of things that are just right about our planet. I was noticing um, in Fox News two days ago, they were talking about how they discovered another planet they think might, might, might be hospitable for life. Really? Well, they, they have no idea, number one. And they have really underestimated the number of conditions that have to be just so. Yes, there's billions of planets in the universe, I'm sure of it. The problem is what's required for life is even more rare than the number of planets we have. The conditions have to be just so, and we happen to have them on our planet. Just the right conditions of our location related to the sun, the right tilt, the right atmospheric conditions, even the right terrestrial crust layer, not too thick, not too thin, and the presence of a moon which does great things for us. It slows down our rotation. It gives us seasons. It actually controls tides. These are things that you have to be in place for life to emerge on a planet. And that means that the number of planets that would actually fit this qualification is incredibly small. One. So if we go back to this analogy, look, I knew when I walked up to this scene that this was tampered with. I wasn't just going to walk away and say, oh, well, bad accident. I knew based on the conditions that this was no accident. Make sense? In a similar way, we have a condition here that we cannot just write off as an accident. We've got both a foundational level, a unique backstory. We have a regional level of the galaxies, which is hard to ignore. And finally, we have this locational level of all these tampered, all these little... You, know, you remember we talked last night about Lawrence Krauss? I, I love his work because I think he's kind of, he's kind of cocky. And he's kind of funny at times. And he's kind of a goofball. But he wrote a book called A Universe from Nothing. And here's one of the things that he kind of argues. He says, well, look, why are you even asking this stupid question about fine-tuning? Like, duh. This is just the way it is because we happen to be in a universe that allows us to look at it and ask the question to begin with. In other words, he says it this way. Put it another way, it's not surprising to find that we live in a universe in which we can live. You catching it? He's saying this is an observational phenomena. You know, this doesn't require anything extravagant. Look, it just happens to be this way. And because it happens to be this way, you evolve to a place where you can observe it and say, wow, I wonder why it happens to be this way. Well, if it didn't happen to be this way, you wouldn't be here to observe it. So he says, look, why is it so surprising 
to find that it's fine-tuned. If it wasn't fine-tuned, you wouldn't be here to find it surprising. Do you follow me on it now? And believe it or not, people look at this and go, yeah. They'll say, yeah, you're right. It's just an observational phenomena. It's just the fact that you can observe it does not mean it's, it's anything to be curious about. Really? Okay, let's go back to our crime scene for a second. Could you imagine if I arrive at the crime scene and I go, I'm not working this. Why do you think it's so surprising to find this the way it is? I mean, think about it. To put it another way, it's not surprising to find a dead body in a house which, in which there exists a dead body. Let me put you a different way. We shouldn't be surprised, okay, to find dead bodies in a house with the windows and doors suspiciously closed and the vents and the gas lines found as they were. If the conditions weren't like this, no one would have died and we wouldn't have been called to the scene. Does that sound satisfying to you? No. Detectives know that there's a difference between an observation and an explanation. Yes, I can observe these conditions, and they happen to be this way. But that does not explain why they're this way. That's my job, is to explain why they were this way. The same is true for scientists who are looking at the universe. Their job is to not just to confuse the fact that these things are the way they are. No, we need an explanation for why they are that way. 